Hi friends, recently the first part of the video was published where we built a welding inverter. Today we will continue. To understand what I'm talking about, I recommend watching the first part. A link is in the description. Without wasting time, let's go to the point. We stopped at the chalk. It isn't so simple here, and in fact the choke is quite critical. The greater its inductance, the better the arc will ignite even at low currents. According to the circuit, the choke inductance is 40 microhenry, it's enough, but I got confident ignition of the arc at currents from 30 amps, and in principle, this is enough too. Honestly, I tried different materials for the core alcifier, unknown rings which are apparently used as a filter in frequency converters, and finally a core collected from transformer plates. The best solution is to use powder iron core. They are specially designed to work as a choke, but the rings should be of big size. Finding them is not so simple, and they cost not cheap. As a result, on the advice of a colleague Timur, who previously assembled this welder, my choice stopped on a package of iron transformer plates. The trick is that it's practically impossible to drive such a core into saturation. That is, you can increase the inductance and get a guaranteed ignition of the arc at low currents. As you can see, I got guaranteed soft arc at a current of even 10 amperes, which is good news. And, if you want your homemade products to look like a factory product, I recommend using the services of the GLCPCB company, which is producing printed circuit boards. They provide the shortest time to manufacture the boards, only 24 hours from the date of the order, fast delivery, and low pricing ranging from $2 for 10 boards with dimensions of 10 by 10 cm for any color. You can be sure of the quality and scale of production by viewing my video from the GLC factory. A link to the video and website of the company can be found in the description. I collected the package from what was at hand. As a result, the final dimensions are now in front of you. First, I wrapped the plates with Captain tape, then paper and made the winding. The wire is unfortunately aluminum. Yes, copper is better, but only aluminum was available at hand. The winding has three rows, each row of 10 to 12 turns. After each row, the winding was varnished in several layers and put fabric isolation. The total inductance is about 80 microhenry. The disadvantage of this choke is its large size and weight, but in my case, everything turned out quite compactly, and even I managed to set it on the board. The choke ends were crimped with tinned copper terminals. Note I said, Tinned, otherwise such connection will not work for a long time. It will overheat and oxidize. Well, as a result, we have such a pretty unit. Input part. As a diet bridge taken ready assembled KBPC3510. It's for 35 amps reverse voltage of 1000 volts mounted on a radiator. The power relay in the soft start circuit with a 24 volt coil is designed for a current of 15 to 30 real amperes. If the welder is planning on currents of more than 120 amps, then it is advisable to use a relay of exactly 30 amperes. Input electrolytic capacitors are for 450 volt, in my case two pieces at 470 microfarads. It is advisable to install three. It will not be worse. We must choose capacitors from a good manufacturer with the lowest possible internal resistance. Input limiting resistor I recommend to take on 10 watts, a resistance from 10 to 30 ohms. The diodes in the converter circuit need ultra-fast precisely for the current and voltage that are marked at the circuit. I replace the assembly of capacitors with one, the capacity is 0.33 microfarad, a special purpose capacitor designed to operate in pulse circuits. They are used in induction heaters, conventional film capacitors put here is highly undesirable. The PWM chip is installed on the socket for solderness mounting. After full adjustment, the chip must be soldered on the board. It isn't enough just thinning and strengthening with the solder power tracks on the board. You need to reinforce them with a copper wire. I had such thin copper tapes for connecting solar modules. The tape withstands currents under 20 amperes. Six stripes plus a track on the PCB plus solder and as a result we get beautiful power tracks. 
Adjustment. First, we supply a voltage of 24 volts for control. The mains power is turned off at this moment. Check the signal on the gate of the IGBT transistor. By the way, during adjustment, you can use field effect transistors. For example, I said IRF840. It is weak, but you can adjust the circuit. The transistor must be on a radiator. We check the presence of control pulses between transistor gate and the supply minus. The pulses should look approximately like this, filling 43 to 47% frequency, about 30 kHz. If there are pulses, then everything is OK, and we go on. The first start of the circuit is done through a 100 watt incandescent safety lamp. That's enough for the beginning. Moreover, it is desirable to connect the lamp to the gap after the capacitors. Again, it is advisable to power the control circuit from a separate external 24 volt power supply. The laboratory power supply will feed excellent. The load resistor in the current feedback circuit must be replaced to 10 ohms, 1 to 2 watts. This is necessary to adjust the circuit at low output currents. Of course, you must remember about the safety. The board has capacious high voltage capacitors, from the kiss of which any two legged creature will be on the floor. Be sure to discharge these capacitors before adjustment. We plug into mains and the lamp will flash for a moment because capacitors at the initial moment are charged with a sufficiently large current. We check the voltage of the inverter output. It should be about 60 volts. Let me remind you that this is an open circuit voltage without output load. We set the current regulator in the minimum position. Next, we load the inverter, for example, with a nichrome spiral or a light bulb. First, we load a little and then gradually increase until the current limitation works, that is, the duration of the control pulses decrease sharply. Moreover, the circuit should respond to the rotation of a variable resistor. The pulse duration should smoothly vary depending on the position of the slider of the variable resistor. If this does not happen, we change the ends of the secondary winding of the current transformer. Next, we change the safety lamp to a more powerful one. I took 300 watts. You can insert a more powerful field effect transistor or IGBT, but remember that we still haven't fully tuned the circuit. The resistance of the load resistor can be reduced by half and we repeat the same only at higher currents. You can try the inverter for a short circuit at low current values. At this stage, we already understand that we have assembled the welding machine and we can ignite a small arc. If the current is adjusted in the normal mode, then everything is done correctly. Remember that the inverter is without cooling, so don't proceed for a long time. Now we need to bring the inverter to normal. Only at this stage, after fully setting up the circuit, we set a power IGBT transistor. It is advisable to take cooling radiators from PC processors. They are pretty solid. Under output rectifier is thermal grease and not used insulating gasket. A power transistor with one of the high-speed diodes is located on the second radiator. The latter must be insulated with a heat-conducting gasket. The power transformer, choke and radiators must be securely fixed. It is enough to tighten the transformer and choke with plastic clamps. You can additionally glue them to the board. The radiators is desirable securely attached to the board and provide isolation from each other, so that they in no case come into contact during vibrations or falls. A very important factor is cooling. Don't save on this. Install powerful high-speed large diameter fans. In my case, this one is most likely to be used. It isn't so powerful, but works from mains, based on an asynchronous motor and is literally eternal. No additional circuits are needed. Plug in mains and that's all. If it can't cope, I will replace it with a more powerful one.
A correctly assembled circuit during operation should it emit whistles and noises. If they are, most likely the problem is in the transformer. Maybe it has the wrong clearance, number of turns, or phasing. At the time of making this video, my device isn't fully completed. As you can see, it is without a case, but despite this, I will test it a bit at average current values. I check the open circuit voltage. It's about 60 volts, and the output voltage doesn't change when the regulator is rotated. The current consumption of the inverter from mains without an output load, so-called idle current, is about 500 milliamperes, excluding the consumption of the control system. The current consumption of the control system at idle from a source of 24 volts is only 80 MA, taking into account the current consumption of the relay coil. The waveform of the signal on the gate of the power transistor, the inverter is connected to mains, the output isn't loaded, power is supplied to the control circuit from an external source. The waveform of the signal on the fixing winding, the conditions are the same. The waveform of the signal on mains winding, the conditions are the same. The waveform of the signal on the secondary winding, the conditions are the same. Weight, considering a rather massive choke, is about 2 kilograms. Now I load the inverter to check the current limiting system. The load is a powerful rheostat. The resistance is about 0 0.25 ohm. The current is regulated quite smoothly. The minimum current in my case is about 10 to 12 amps. Stable arc ignition starts at 10 amperes. By the way, especially for this, I bought a more or less normal holder for the electrode. Everything seems to be beautiful, neat, but copper is false. Terminals I took from a powerful converter. It was possible to buy specialized ones, but in my case such a solution is completely justified since the wiring is also self-made. Next, I will try to weld the 2 mm electrode at currents from 30 to 70 amps. I didn't remove the sound so that experienced welders can appreciate the process. Again, I apologize in advance for the quality of welding, but I hope that I will master it soon too. Now I have an inverter, it remains only to learn how to weld. Everything seems to be normal. The arc kisses softly and doesn't go to the side. It's very well controlled. I also forgot to mention that on the side of the tracks, the board was varnished for moisture resistance and electrical safety. It's advisable to do the same on the component side. In the near future, it will again gather dust on the shelf in waiting of the corpse. By the way, I have a suitable corpse and not even one, but damn laziness is a powerful thing. When you do something for a long time, then the ambitions and determinations aren't the same as on the first days. I just wanted to finish as soon as possible and show it to you. 
That's probably all. Please rate this video, subscribe to my Instagram. If you have any questions, you can contact our group. You will find all the necessary links in the description under the video. Now I say goodbye until we meet again. With you was Kaysian TV.